Jessica Bender is an accomplished author and a licensed couples therapist. Her first book about love and relationships has become a bestseller. Now, she has just finished her second title, Do I Say I Do. She sends it to her editor and publisher, Mike Price. She wants this to get done and over with. Not because she wants to focus on her practice, but because she doesn't want to work with Mike anymore. You see, they are ex-lovers. Whether or not she still has feelings for him, she sees it as kind of awkward to work with him after their breakup. She completely wants to move on. Mike Price is the owner of Price Books Publishing which he inherited from his father. He wants to take the publishing house in a new direction, mainly to make it look more modern and entice authors of the digital age. To do that, he needs to convince investors to believe in his visions. Zach, his VP for marketing and sales, is already taking care of it. And to convince his investors, he needs to make sure that Jessica Bender and Robert Vincent, his two top authors, will stay with them to generate more cash for the publishing house. But it won't be easy. He meets with Robert as the latter is preparing for a shoot for a marketing video. Robert is traditional and keeps on pointing out that the publishing house is not what it once was. He keeps comparing how Mike's father ran the company to how it's being run now. He's not happy about it. After this rather uninspiring meeting, he meets Jessica. This is the first time they've met again after their breakup one and a half years ago. Mike has sampled her new book. He comments about its content, mainly about the rules and checklists to take note of before tying the knot. He doesn't beat around the bush and offers her a contract renewal with a 10% increase. But Jessica politely stands her ground. She tells Mike that she has received an offer from Browncroft Press, a major publishing house. Once her second book gets released, she wants out of price publishing. Mike gets agitated to know that she has plans to move. He brings up their breakup, to which Jessica calmly retorts that she doesn't have much choice in the matter. He becomes the businessman again and offers a 15% increase, but she refuses. With no other choice, Mike reinforces the publicity clause of her contract. Jessica is appalled by this. She meets her friend, Kim, a publishing agent, to discuss her contract. It says that the author must engage in promotional events as determined by the publisher. By promotional events, it means the marketing videos which Mike asked her to film to bump up her book's pre-sales. Kim acknowledges that following this clause will be a good move. If Browncroft is serious about getting her as their author, then book sales are an important aspect of the negotiations. Kim adds that Jessica and Mike work well together, even though they ended on a bad note. But that's what's bothering Jessica. It's all marketing and sales for him. He doesn't even bother asking how things are with her, even though it's the first time they met after the breakup. At that point, Kim's husband Tony approaches them to get his wife. Kim convinces Jessica to do the publicity clause. After all, both of them have moved on, so how bad could it be to work together again? Meanwhile, Mike is thinking about his conversation with Jessica. His secretary, Hannah, assumes that Jessica hasn't signed the contract renewal. But he has a plan. He's going to reinforce the publicity clause, so Jessica will stay a while. Long enough for her to rethink her decision. Hannah looks at him dubiously. She's aware of his boss's past with the author. But she simply leaves him to think about it. Mike reflects on his plan. He does want Jessica to stay longer with his publishing company. Is it really because of the investors? Or is it because he wants to spend more time with her? The next day, Jessica is in Price Publishing to fulfill her duties as their contract author. She's invited her current boyfriend, Stephen, to help her with her tasks. If she needs to make promotional videos for Mike, then she might as well use her own ideas for them. She plans to make videos about compatibility tests that are based on her new book. The first activity is about doing a painting with a partner. Mike doesn't approve of this. However, when he hears that Jessica's boyfriend can't make it because of an emergency session with a client, Mike immediately volunteers to stand in as the partner. So the ex-lovers put on their aprons and fill their palettes with paints. When the camera rolls, Jessica explains the analogy between marriage and creating a painting with a partner. A couple brings in their own colors to make a wonderful, meaningful painting, which is similar to a marriage. However, as Jessica goes on, Mike keeps on interrupting and inserting his own analogies. They try to paint the reference photo, but it turns out like a child painting, because they keep on arguing in front of the camera. Connor, the videographer, doesn't know if he should leave the couple alone, but he continues to film. The video shooting concludes with both Jessica and Mike fuming at each other, with paint brushed all over their clothes. Later that day, Jessica meets with Kim to tell her how frustrated she is with the turn of events. The only consolation she has is that the footage won't be uploaded. She doesn't know why Mike still gets under her skin, even though they separated. Then she remembers how they broke up. He was supposed to attend a ceremony that recognized Jessica's contributions to psychiatry, but he stood her up. It became the last straw for her, because he was always working to get his father's approval. She thought their relationship couldn't work out if she would always be a second priority in his life. In this film, it's not only Jessica and Mike's relationship that gets put into the spotlight. Two other scenarios reflect how relationships can be developed and maintained. 
One is about Connor, who is trying to get Whitney's attention. Hannah offers to help him get the girl of his dreams. After all, they are friends helping each other. The other scenario is about Kim and her husband Tony. They are both publishing agents, but they work in rival companies. They have one rule, never bring the competition home. But fate will test this rule, as both of them are trying to sign a rising author, Jonah Davis. It remains to be seen who among them will break their own rule. In his booth, Connor reviews the footage of Jessica and Mike arguing, and finds it entertaining. Hannah sees it and laughs at it as well. Connor is instructed to delete the footage, so he is just about to do it when Zack enters and asks him to fix some things. Connor leaves him in his booth. That's when Zack watches the footage. He thinks it's entertaining, and may help boost the pre-sales. So he uploads it. The next day, Kim sees the footage and immediately warns Jessica. Jessica is so mad about this betrayal that she immediately goes to Mike to confront him. But Mike is innocent about it, and so is Connor. Zack reveals that it's him that uploaded the video. He tells everyone that there should be no reason for them to fret. Jessica's new book is about honesty in the relationship, and the footage shows just that. It has reached thousands of hits, and immediately bumped up the book's pre-sales. In the end, Jessica and Mike reach a compromise about the next videos they are to make. Jessica will have complete creative control over the videos, to make sure her reputation as a couple's therapist won't get tainted. Plus, she'll work with her boyfriend. Fine, Mike says. That's the best option for both of them, if they want to maintain a working professional relationship. But things don't go the way they plan the next day. Steven is there with Jessica during the rehearsal of her next video. Mike and Zach watch the rehearsal, then think it will never have the same funny but genuine atmosphere the first video had. So Zach winks at Mike. The next thing they know is that Steven has to leave because his car is getting towed. Mike steps in again to be Jessica's partner. The topic for the video is financial management between the couple. The bottom line is to be practical about their financial priorities, without sacrificing their own leisure activities. Mike interrupts the flow of Jessica's discussion. He keeps transferring play money into different envelopes, but she insists on her own way. In the end, Jessica walks out of the shoot. Mike even has the gall to ask if that's all that they make as a couple. On the other side of the story, Hannah helps Connor to get Whitney's attention. First, she tells him to show off his strengths, which are knowledge of new gadgets and fixing computers. But his strength is also his downside, because Whitney only sees him as the tech guy. So Hannah advises Connor to change his fashion sense. However, this doesn't work as well, because Connor feels awkward. While all this is happening, they discover that both of them are fans of video games and cosplay events. As they talk to each other, they feel comfortable in each other's presence. But Hannah remembers that she's only helping Connor to get his dream girl. It's just a bonus that she found a friend with whom she can be true to herself. Connor thinks the same about Hannah, but his focus, for now, is Whitney. In a drastic move, Hannah kisses him in front of Whitney. She says girls tend to be more interested if they realize that other girls want the guy. And this works. Whitney notices Connor. They finally have a dinner date, which is a dream come true for him. But he sees a poster of the video game, and wants to invite Whitney to play it with him. However, she dismisses his interests, and instead wants to go to the mall. Meanwhile, Kim and Tony's competition to sign Jonah Davis is becoming more intense. Kim discovers some papers that indicate Tony is about to win the author, so she makes sure that her husband will not get his way, while she woos the author to sign with her. Tony finds out about this because of the missent cookies at their house, but that is simply a decoy to distract him. Even at home, their competition is hard to hide, because they both want to win. It looks like they are forgetting the only rule they have in the relationship. Back to our protagonists. Jessica is fuming again about their latest video. To her indignation, Stephen likes it. He supports this path of marketing, because it will promote the book and their practice as well. He tells her it will be better if she works with Mike as a partner, so Jessica calls her ex to a park. She thinks it will be good for them to do some trust exercises in a neutral place, so that when they make videos again, they won't end up hating each other more. But, just like before, everything doesn't go according to plan. When they try to list down things about their partner that bother them, they end up listing down the things they hated about each other when they were still a couple. He says she's a sore loser who can't take a joke. She says he's a bad winner who can't take things seriously. In the end, Mike asks the point of this exercise. Jessica says it's about starting a proper conversation. But it doesn't always work that way. It's like her book, that explains 10 steps to fix a problem, when only one step is needed. She takes offense at this, and says she wrote the book to help people with their marriage. He counters that it's not a book, it's an owner's manual, with a lot of checklists to make sure everything works right. Jessica emphasizes that she wrote those checklists to make sure no one will make the same mistakes as she did when dating him. Later, she meets up with Kim to express her frustrations. To her astonishment, Kim has the same opinion as Mike about the book, although she says it more nicely. She tells Jessica that it's so practical it's coming off as cold. 
It's missing the most essential ingredient in a marriage, which is love. Jessica thinks about it for the rest of the day. Meanwhile, Mike proceeds to Robert Vincent's farm to convince him to sign the contract renewal. Zach reminds him that they need his signature to keep their investors happy. But Mike isn't sure about this, especially after he saw Robert's new book. It doesn't have the same literary genius as the first novel published by his company. Zach is indifferent. Robert Vincent is an established author. Anything he writes will rake money in. Fortunately for Mike, there's still hope. Robert tells him to come up with the contract so he can consider it. That afternoon, Mike returns to the office and waits for Hannah to print the contract. She congratulates Mike on this, but this means he needs Jessica to sign the contract, too. He's not sure he's doing a good job, and it's not helping that their breakup is always hindering their professional relationship. Hannah advises him to apologize to her, not because he wants her to sign the contract, but because he owes it to her. So Mike visits Jessica later that night. He helps her cook her dinner and at the same time apologizes for his behavior during the video shoots. He admits that he was only trying to capture the spark they had before, but he realizes that maybe it's not there anymore. He also tells her that it's fun working with her. He assures her that he respects her as an author and as a professional, so he promises not to get in her way again. Jessica feels the sincerity in Mike's voice, so she invites him to stay longer and have dinner with her. They reminisce about their past in a lighthearted way. It seems like they are comfortable talking about it, now that they've accepted their flaws in this situation. Then Jessica prompts him about her book, which gives Mike a chance to express how he really feels about it. He tells her that the second book is not the way he sees her to be. The first book is about opening oneself to love, which resonated with him in the way she sees her. The second book is far from it. It's full of rules that sound like it's discounting love from the relationship. Mike still has a lot to say, but it's not about her book anymore. He decides to keep it to himself, so he won't destroy this calm evening between the two of them. As he's about to leave, Mike tells her that it's good to follow some rules, but from time to time, it's good to let loose and have some fun. This conversation has a good effect on their mood the next day. Jessica prepares some props for a cooking video. The focus is on the collaboration between the couple, to make food that both will like. Cooking can be tedious, because of the rules to follow. But it can be fun when the couple is in sync with what they want to cook, how they'll cook it, and to have fun while doing it. Connor looks happy and satisfied as he follows Jessica and Mike teasing each other. For the first time, the video ends with both of them satisfied with the food they made. However, Mike's happiness about getting along with Jessica doesn't last long. Robert is still delaying the contract signing, because of his traditional views. In a way, he's right. A lot of things have changed since Mike took over the company, and it isn't the way it was before. But the deal breaker is when he asks Mike about his thoughts on his book. Mike wants to tell him that it's not as interesting as his first book. But because of the pressure to get him signed, he lies and tells Robert the book is great. Robert sees through this. He tells him he doesn't want to sign with the publishing company that only sees the dollar sign. Robert reminds him that his father wasn't always about the money, but about helping new authors find their way into the literary world. If Mike doesn't have a passion for it, then perhaps he's not cut out for it. Because of this, he decides to finally bring out his father's books. He's kept them in storage since his takeover, because he wants to distinguish himself from the way his father ran things. Just then, Jessica comes to let him know her idea for the next video. Instead, he invites her to come with him to the storage room. There, Mike finds the book report he did on Robert Vincent's first novel. He didn't expect his father to keep it. If there's one thing he shares with his father, it's a love for literature. He shares with Jessica how Robert's standards and storytelling have changed since he took over. She reminds him that he's a good editor, and she's saying that from experience. Therefore, she's sure that he can work with Robert to improve the new book. Then he finds the book that Jessica liked to borrow before. He asks if they can go back to the way they were, but she refuses him. Between the two of them, it's Mike that's still hoping for a second chance. He knows that he was wrong before, and now, he's ready to make amends. The only question is, will Jessica be willing to give their relationship a second chance? The next day, before they shoot the promotional video, she comes in early to tell Mike that the Browncroft offer has been made. It's a good one, but she hasn't made her decision yet. Mike knows that he can't lose her again, not now that he's made great efforts to mend whatever relationship they have left. He tells her he's always known that he'll fight for her. This makes Jessica think about her career and her relationship. Will it be worth it to give themselves a chance? They proceed to shoot the video. The activity is to share one secret that can open up a conversation between the couple. This activity can improve trust in the relationship. Jessica shares trivial information about herself. But Mike takes this chance to implicitly explain what happened on the night they broke up. Jessica was invited to a ceremony to honor her contributions to her field. She was expecting Mike to come, because for once, she wanted to know how important she was to him. But Mike was too busy proving himself to his father and he forgot the one woman that was important in his life. She's kind, smart, and supportive of him, but he took her for granted. Realizing this, he gave his resignation and tried to get to the ceremony. Unfortunately, it was too late. 
Jessica had broken up with him, too fed up with being second in his life. Since it was painful for him too, he retracted his resignation and returned to the publishing company. After this revelation, everything seems to go smoothly. Jessica signs another two-book deal with Price Publishing. She and Mike toast to a second chance in their professional relationship. Perhaps this is also a second chance for both of them in love. But not everything stays well forever. Jessica overhears the conversation between Mike and Zach, about how Mike needs to make sure that Jessica and Robert sign their contracts to keep the investors happy. For her, this betrayal is far worse than their first breakup. She really thought that Mike had changed, only to find that he's remained as workaholic as before, if not worse. When she goes to Kim to rant, she says she feels hurt that she let her guard down. Kim tells her that for better or for worse, Mike has always brought out her true self. This means that throughout this whole ordeal, Mike has managed to make her realize that she still loves him, after everything that has happened. She just gave herself a second chance to be with him. Is she willing to let it all go and never let Mike explain? On the other hand, Mike feels conflicted about the situation. He expresses his worries to Hannah. He's afraid of losing Jessica, both professionally and in love. And now, he's on the brink of losing Robert Vincent, too, if he wants to be honest about the quality of his new book. If that happens, he'll lose the investors. Then he'll have proven nothing. Hannah reminds him that he won't lose Jessica. That's because she didn't sign because of the things he said to her, but because she trusts him to take care of her as an author. If Mike can make Robert trust him as his publisher as well, then there's no need to prove himself to anyone, because his passion and vision for the company will vouch for him. Mike thinks about this, then he braces himself for the things that he's about to do. At this point, it's not only Jessica and Mike's story that's at risk of getting ruined. Hannah is happy that Connor finally got the girl of his dreams. But then, she realizes that what she feels for him is more than just being a friend. She tries to enjoy all the moments she's with him, especially the time when they both attend their favorite cosplay event. She snaps a selfie of them both, which Connor has as a screensaver on his computer. Whitney notices this and warns Hannah to back off. But Whitney doesn't realize that Connor is slowly falling for Hannah. So he confronts Whitney and tells her how he really feels. He's grateful that he got a chance to date her. But he realizes it's not good when they both have to change just so they like each other. If nothing else, Connor wants to be honest in his relationships, and he can only do that with Hannah. Whitney gets the message, especially after looking at his computer screensaver. Later on, Connor approaches Hannah and admits how he feels about her. They both realize they're good for each other. They start their relationship with a kiss. On the other hand, Kim and Tony are still fighting over Jonah Davis. It's come to a point when they would even receive calls from work during dinner, which is a big no for their relationship. Eventually, it's Kim who calls a truce between them. She realizes that it's healthy to have competition between couples from time to time. But it's a different scenario when it comes to a point when they both keep secrets just to one-up the other and feel good about themselves. As it turns out, this elusive author decides to divide his work between the rival company in which Kim and Tony work. In the end, they both win, and they get to preserve their relationship. It's all good and happy with these two couples, but what about our main protagonists? Mike braces himself as he meets Robert Vincent. There, he decides to be honest with the author. He tells him that his quality of writing has declined since his first novel. Mike makes it clear that he wants to preserve the same quality with the new book, so he can't persuade Robert to sign if he won't change. But he's written down some of his criticisms, in the hopes that Robert will accept them and revise his book. After this meeting, he asks Hannah to give Jessica her revised contract. He's letting her go. Zach thinks his boss has lost it. Mike thinks that way, too. But he'll stand by his decisions. He'd rather have his author's trust than do shallow things for money. It turns out, he's right in following his heart. Robert comes back and recognizes his shortcomings, and Mike's authority as his editor and publisher. He signs the renewal contract and promises to bring back the high quality that his first novel had. To end this good day, Jessica visits him and tells him she didn't sign with Browncroft. She knows it won't be a good match. And her heart knows that, after all the things that have been said and done, she wants to have that second chance with Mike both professionally and in love. As a licensed couples therapist, she has the right to say they're a good match. 